court does call the case of the people of the state of Michigan versus Linda Dom. And so state your appearance. David, I bring on behalf of the Okay. All right. Date time set for trial. Well, date. <laughs> Almost time. <laughs> you ready to proceed? People are ready to proceed. We have sequestered our witnesses. I move sequestration of any possible defense witnesses. We only anticipate one, Your Honor, and this is the defendant. All right. Very good. Opening statement. Um, Your Honor, with the consent of defense, people will waive opening. No problem. All right. Would you like to give an opening waive or reserve, Mr. Colson? We'll reserve, Your Honor. All right. Very good. Problem, sir. We'll waive. All right. Any additional witnesses for the people? Uh, no, Your Honor. Take a rest. Your Honor, at this time, I have a motion for a directed verdict of not guilty. Yes, sir. Even in a light taken most favorable to the people, we have a, we have two CMH workers coming to a location called there because you have an autistic PTSD suffering individual, fairly large. I mean, he's 10 years old, I, I acknowledge, but fairly substantial stature was, I think, Katie's words, who is out of control. He was kicking, screaming, trying to hit people. And my client knew only enough force to try to control the situation. What I suspect is the crux of the charge is the slap on the, on the leg. And that slap on the leg came based upon the testimony of two of the witnesses of the people when, there was, when my client was trying to physically calm him down and he tried to kick her. So she slaps him on the leg. That is not abuse. That's not even an assault. When she's doing that in response to an, an, an aggressive action on the part of that individual. Now, I recognize he's 10 years old, but still, everybody that testified, testified that he was out of control and he was physically threatening. So the people have not sustained their burden of showing the charge in this case. Response. And I'd like to ask the court to deny the motion for a directed verdict and go forward with hearing argument and making those decisions based on the proofs. And in this case, self-defense, of course, as the court knows, is a question of fact. The witnesses so far have testified that the defendant was the one who engaged in a physical contact. She was the one holding him down and that she slapped him. There is evidence to support a finding of guilt in the light of the evidence viewed most favorable to the prosecution, we ask the court allow the trial to continue and make its decision based on the facts um, after hearing argument, using arguments, and if there is any defense testimony, of course, we ask that the court just allow the trial to continue. Well, but would your argument be the same even if it wasn't an issue of self defense? But if one is looking at what one has to determine the defendant's intent. And would that sustain, look at most favorably to the people in an assault charge? I'm not sure I understand the court's question. So if I look at all of the evidence and like most favorable to the people, is the intent element satisfied? People believe it has been satisfied based on the defendant's actions and her statements. Of, I don't care if I lose my job today. I don't care. And continuing and then going and physically slapping a child's leg when she's already engaged in trying to have physical control over it. Well, Judge, I don't want to jump in, directed your question to Ms. Lundy, but uh, let me point out the fact that that was the reason why Ms. Donald was there. She was called there by the family because this kid was out of control. It was her job to, along with Katie, to try to get the situation under control. And when, and when she's holding this individual and the individual is trying to kick her, for, him, for her to slap his foot away, I mean, the, the court characterized it as self-defense, and I think I may have used that word, but I think more than that is that her behavior was justified. That that was why she was there, to prevent him. And, and I say that in the context of Katie's testimony, 
that most of her, most of the aggression uh, on this kid was directed at Ms. Donald. Your Honor, there's no evidence in the record at this point to support that physically restraining the child was part of the crisis team's response. That was, was, not, was what? Was part of what the crisis team was there to respond to do. It was not to physically restrain the child. There's no evidence in the record to support that, that was part of the application. There was no, at this point in the record, the people who presented evidence, they were there to help assess the child. Your Honor, well, the burden's on the people. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, this is backwards at this point. I mean, is there is there any... Wouldn't the burden be on the people to show, given the circumstances, that somehow she acted outside of the scope of what she was supposed to do? When I was speaking, when I was questioning um, Ms. Carroll, the other witness, she indicated that she had no physical interactions. With Keaton, except to take one bottle away from his hands. There was no indication that she had any physical contact with him. She didn't restrain him. She didn't touch him. She didn't sit on him. She also testified that the physical aggression was aimed at the defendant. Not solely. But, okay, let me just try to get this right. Is it the people's position that the crisis intervention workers would have no authority to make physical contact with Keaton? No authority to make physical contact with Keaton? Yes. In this circumstance, it doesn't appear that it would be appropriate for them to make physical contact. With Where do I get that from? parents the parent and grandmother are there and present and able to physically restrain that's the argument Pardon? the mother and the grandmother were there and they could physically restrain the people's position is that it's not appropriate for a cmh worker to slap it where do i get that from though where do i get that the physical restraint would not be an appropriate response from the cmh worker where do i where where am i supposed to get that from your Honor, when Ms. Carroll was testifying, she talked about how she did not have any physical interactions. Ms. The, people well, the fact that she did not doesn't mean that you can't. I mean, what, what you're arguing, first of all, Ms. Carroll and the defendant are there in different roles. Yes. That was very clear by her testimony. Yes. So someone in the defendant's role, where do I have evidence that she exceeded some authority or action. The exceeding of authority, the assault of conduct, is not necessarily the is not their strength. People are alleging a slap is where it becomes a criminal action. That is the point at which it's become a criminal. Well, but I have an individual by testimony of other witnesses kicking, and then Miss. Carol's specific testimony <laughs> was that she believed that Keaton was trying to kick her at the time of the slap. And Your Honor, then we also the court the court asked about intent as well. Correct. Well, yeah, but I haven't left this subject yet okay. because. What's being argued is, is that somehow the defendant exceeded her authority. I'm not sure where I get that from based upon what I heard. But even if, and the people aren't arguing that the defendant could not have restrained him. Correct. And then the only testimony, because one of the witnesses testified she could not see what Keaton was doing at the time of the slap or right before the slap on, on the cap. Ms. Victoria, yes, John. Ms. Carroll, however, specifically stated that when the slap happened, she believes that Keaton was trying to kick her, her being the defendant. Yes, sir. That is what she testified to. 
The people are not arguing that the defendant had zero right to physically intervene. People's argument is that the slap was set too far. And that's why we're asking the court to deny a motion for the directed verdict and allow the trial to continue to a verdict. But how does the people's theory that it's a step too far Was she supposed, if someone was trying to kick her people, is she supposed to let that happen? Or are the people arguing that that technique, as opposed to grabbing and restraining his leg, is what makes this different? Yes, Ron, the latter. So she should have grabbed and restrained his leg rather than a slap to the leg of don't do that. If I was to advise action. Okay, let's assume that, and I get what the people's arguments. Where do I get that either of those would be appropriate or that either would be inappropriate or where do i have anything that draws a distinction between the two the touching done by the defendant to restrain keaton from hurting others or hurting himself was done in the sense of for stopping that from happening the slap is where it becomes harmful offensive or violent touching the touching in a slap to the leg of the autistic child having a meltdown is very different than a restraint of him stopping him from hurting himself or stopping him from hurting others. Her behavior after the incident when she's speaking with Ms. Carroll about what happened and the evidence before the court of her not wanting to discuss the incident, of her not I, I'm, to I'm at a loss, Ms. Lundy. I'm at a loss to figure out if she grabbed his leg as opposed to slapping his leg, what becomes the distinction in that as to whether or not one constitutes an assault and the other does not? The viewpoint of the people would be grabbing the leg to immobilize him to stop him from causing harm is in line with the other types of touching that happen today. It's in line with the types of touching that prevent Keaton from hurting himself or hurting others. Slapping his leg does not immobilize it, does not stop him from kicking. Yes, it does. Now, there was a characterization by defense counsel during his motion that defense put away. And not what the defense always testified to was that it was a slap on the leg. It was not slapping the leg away. You say potato, I say potato. I mean, what's the difference, Judge? I'm a bit unclear as to what I'm... The people are arguing that the slap to the leg was in some way to place Keaton in fear or harm him in some way? That it would be a violent, forceful, harmful sort of touching for the purposes of the assault or assault and battery statute. I'm trying to figure out where I get that from. Because, it, and that's where I go to the intent. If her intent were to do that, then I might agree with the people. My concern is all of the testimony I have indicates that the her intent was to stop him from kicking. That's different than if she is just attempting to try to cause some offensive touching to the individual. Unless Unless I've got it wrong here, 
that there's some other strike to the child for some other purpose. Is there? Because I... evidence already to this point that the defendant was engaging in physical contact with Keaton to restrain him. The people's contention is that if she had wanted him to restrain him from kicking her, she didn't need to slap him on the leg. She could have simply gotten control of his leg and held on to it like she was holding on to his hands. So he's on the floor as I your testimony. Maybe in the chair. Well, no. Oh, hold on. Initially, he's on the floor. Yes. According to Victoria, the defendant picks him up by his arms and puts him in a chair. <laughs> the people are not arguing that's an assault. Right. The restraining, and I think where she, they indicated also that she had part of her body and she's restraining him to the chair. That also the people are not arguing is an assault. That's her car. That then while she's restraining this individual in the fashion that she's restraining him, the testimony I have is that believes that Keaton was trying to kick her. So something is something is going on with his lower body at that point. That was, by the way, the testimony also is it was going on on the floor when he was kicking that her attempt to potentially stop that in that fashion would in people's mind then constitute an assault yes sir anything else from our side? <clears throat> Court's going to stand in very brief recess. I'll come back and get my decision on the motion. Back on the record in the case of the people versus Donald. Um, the defendant's motion for a directed verdict, um, given the standard um, at this time, but also acknowledging as to whether or not an individual could find beyond a reasonable doubt, or a fact finder could find beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant committed the um, the offense of assault and battery but also acknowledging that i have to take the evidence in the light most favorable to the non-moving party the court is at this time going to deny the defendant's motion to for a directed verdict at this time your honor we're going to rest all right closing arguments Your Honor, I'll be brief as I largely previewed my closing argument for the pe for the court from the people during the directed verdict motion, which is that in this case, the defendant responding out to assist this family in a mental health crisis did not go too far when she arrived. She didn't go too far when she tried to talk to the child. She didn't go too far when she tried to stop the child from hitting others and hitting herself, but that she did go too far when she slapped the 10-year-old child on the leg. We ask the court return a verdict of guilty for assault and battery. Thank you. Thank you. I will also be brief, Your Honor. And I thank Ms. Londi for narrowing the scope of the argument to, to that one point. It's something I didn't say to the court when we were arguing the motion. Ms. Londi said, Your Honor, it's the slapping. It would have been okay had she grabbed his leg to keep him from kicking her, but not to slap the leg away or slap the leg. She, she objected when I used the word slap the leg away. Your Honor, in, 
take it out of the context of a CMH worker and a 10 year old kid. Somebody tries to kick another individual. That individual is not gonna sit there and say, gee, what's an appropriate response? Is it okay if I grab the leg, but not okay if I slap the leg? No, that you don't, you don't have that luxury, Judge. She did what she did in an attempt to keep from being kicked. And on that basis alone, she should be found not guilty. And Your Honor, just in rebuttal closing, context is everything. Yes, it is. Whoa, whoa. Stop. I was just agreeing. Stop. Oh, was that being stop? I was trying to be stop. Go ahead, Miss Lundy. In context is everything. This is not a situation that happened on the street where someone tried to kick someone randomly. This is a situation where this child is having this mental health crisis, and this is the trained responder to come out. People contend it's not okay for him to be slapped by the worker that was supposed to be there to help him. Court and looking at the entirety of this set of circumstances and listening very closely to the witnesses in terms of what was going on at that point. Um, it is clear that Keaton is at an escalated point um that he does have based upon the testimony um at times that he hits others he's angry he throws things um and that at this particular point he wanted to um kill himself um, the two workers arrive scene as by the testimony keaton is on the floor he's at one point he's kicking he has things in his hand that he or some type of glass object or ball in his hands the defendant in this case this is from victoria indicates that she picked him up by his arms put him in the chair um and that there was talk about how disrespectful she's being. So at the point in time, there is an attempt to de-escalate, is the best of the court could describe it, by putting him in a chair and restraining him in some fashion. Um, but then at some point, and I, I think it's critical to realize that based upon the testimony, that when on the floor, he's described as he's she's he's just kicking. He's doing all kinds of things. She brings him up to the chair, restrains him. But what really one notices by the testimony is, is that what she's restraining at that moment and what everybody testifies to are his hands and his upper body. She it is clear from at least the testimony and the way the court views it, that she doesn't have his lower body restrained. That then brings me to the testimony of Ms. Carroll, who indicates that she believes Keaton was trying to kick her. Say that again. She believes, because she's there looking at him, believes that Keaton was trying to kick her. Remember the other witnesses are saying they can't see what Keaton's doing at that moment because of the way that the defendant is positioned. She then responds by slapping his leg just above the ankle bone. There's no testimony slapped it, not that it would be necessary for an assault and battery, that in any way it was to that in any way it caused an injury or hurt the child but i think when one looks at the entire context of it she had to have some intent to commit an assault i don't believe that that was, that was what her intent was her intent was to stop him from kicking 
at that moment, mind you, at least in this court's mind, based upon what the court hears, for the protection of everyone that's there. That's why she's restraining. That's why she's doing everything she does so that others aren't hurt by what is an unfortunate episode on Keith's hand. Not only legally, but also in good conscience, given the circumstances, this court could not by any stretch of the imagination find that the defendant intended to commit an assault and battery or that the actions of the defendant in restraining Keith, because it's all one act in terms of what she's doing. You can't parse it apart and say that slap to the leg is an assault as opposed to the actual restraining. She's trying to do a certain thing. Some may agree with it, some may not. But this court does not believe that she was trying to commit any type of an assault and battery upon Keaton at that moment. She was trying to keep everyone else safe, stop him from hurting anybody. More importantly, she was probably trying to stop him from hurting himself. And so for those reasons, the court would find that the people have not sustained their burden and would find that the defendant is not guilty of this offense. The defendant is discharged from any further obligation. To this Thank, you, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a nice night.